leadership flashing with brilliance and excellence. Leadership impacting society with peace, love, and hope. Welcome to the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. Have you heard this news story? Happy, happy um, Tuesday, guys, and I'm pretending this early. Have you heard this news story that the Bushes, the McCain's, and the Romneys are backing Kamala Harris? Now, listen. I'm not going to be like in the most talk radio hosts and say, well, those are just rhinos. Because number one, and, 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 and I'll say this till the cows come home. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm a conservative federalist. I don't like using the word rhino as in Republican in name only. Because both parties have abandoned in some form or shape conservative principles and um, it's like that, that um, news story that my alter ego JR covered yesterday about both parties being co-opted by China and I, and I don't doubt it because now you have the upper crust country club Republicans joining the Democrats in favoring of Kamala and then you have Kamala trying to change the uh, debate rules to go to Trump. So people say, well, see, see, see. Trump hates women. Come on. I have to pose this question to avoid me from getting just downright irate. Can true conservatives overcome this communist uh, infestation. And yeah, I said it. Because I'll tell you something. My granddad, anyways, was a true blue uh, Republican. But he told me that the way some, that back when I was a kid, the way some uh, Republicans were acting, that he was ashamed. And why? Because they're not living according to correct conservative principles. When you have the wild, the wild spread woke communism. Okay, so I'm looking for three for three news stories. This is Fred. Here's one that's a foreign policy bill. Netanyahu warns Hezbollah. Iran, after IDF strike, preempts large-scale attack. Listen to this. A preemptive strike may have stopped a massive Hezbollah attack on Israel. Israeli warplanes took out thousands of Hezbollah missiles ready to launch at the Jewish state. The terror group fired more than 300 rockets and drones, which did little damage. Now Israel's prime minister is sending a warning to Iran and Hezbollah. There's more to come. CBN's Julie Stahl reports. Israel sent more than 100 jets to attack dozens of sites in Lebanon Sunday morning, destroying more than a thousand rockets Hezbollah planned to launch at Israel. As soon as we identified Hezbollah's intention to carry out the attack, we thwarted the majority of the attack. Hezbollah attempted to severely harm the north and center of Israel, but was met with an iron fist. Thousands of missiles and drones were primed to be launched against civilians in Israel. Had these missiles and drones flown, the death toll would have been in the thousands with massive damage. Hezbollah's leader insists Israel started the trouble and his terror group reacted in defense. It was an aggression. 
not a preemptive act. If we assume that it was a preemptive act, then it had no impact at all on our military operations. Hezbollah managed to launch 320 rockets and attack drones. The terror group reportedly targeted Israeli intelligence targets in central Israel. The only Israeli casualty was a sailor killed by shrapnel falling from the sky. Israeli Ambassador Michael Herzog believes the preemptive strike may have prevented a wider war. But he says the threat on the northern border remains, making it impossible for thousands of Israelis to live in their own homes along that border. We have uh, nearly 70,000 people in Israel, northern Israel, away from their homes, refugees in their own country, and we have to make sure they can go back safely to their homes. Herzog also noted that the strong U.S. military presence is helping deter Iran. Two carrier groups are now in the region. The White House is still pursuing a ceasefire deal to end the war in Gaza and bring the region back from the brink of war. However, Hamas has still not accepted a deal. It is incumbent on all parties uh, in the region to work towards de-escalation and stability. And so we are feverishly working in Cairo as we speak with our team and the teams of the other mediators as well. Uh, see, I'm very blinking. His mind is blinking. And do you think Kamala Harris is going to be in support of Israel? No. So I think we true conservatives, we we uh, poor and middle class patriots, need to take a battle to these turds. Some of these people may have been in power for decades. It's time for them to go. I'm just I'm just being honest with you. They've been co-opted. They've been co-opted by woke, by woke communism. Look at what that's doing with Israel. Okay? We need the president to put pride back in this morning to the Americans again. To basically tell enemies of Israel and our enemies pretty much where to go. <laughs> now, I want you to, ch I want you to hear this one, if you will. And of course, I will stop the tape when I have some issues here. It began with a post by former President Trump on Truth Social that said, my administration will be great for women and their reproductive rights. Then over the weekend, Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance said they would not support a federal ban on abortion. Vance even said Trump would veto. Okay. Look, I'm not apologetically pro-life. But you know what? We're beating a dead horse. We're beating a dead horse. This right here is why I don't belong to any political party. I'm ashamed of both parties. And here's why. We've been trying for decades for a federal ban on abortion. And I agree with people like Rob Carson. Leave it up to the states. And here's why. If we make it into a federal issue, you think the Democrats won't try to play by the same rules of the same game? People say, well, if you're not a Democrat, Jimmy, you're a Republican. No. I'm not a Republican. Because right now, there's quite a few Republicans that aren't true conservatives. They won't play ball. They much of the dance around a fire, play kumbaya, and accept some moderate who promises them the wind and don't give it to them. Trump gives us a chance for this country 
to survive. And generally, I trust CBN News. But on this issue, come on. Roe v. Wade got rid of the federal abortion witness test federally. Why do we want to bring it back? We bring it back, the liberals have a field day. Mm. Let's go on to another issue of I get mad. Uh, okay. But, you know, two news stories that illustrate the point. In, in what I've been saying all along, both parties corrupt. Both parties corrupt. And it's sad. And we as Christian conservatives... We need to stop splitting hairs and start shining the lights. If we make a federal case out of everything, how's that going to help us? Excuse me, but the woke communists are doing the same thing. It's the same playbook. And we wonder sometimes why we lose elections. That's it, right there. Look, I believe what Trump says when he says... That he's pro-life. And I wasn't that much of a supporter of, of Trump. I thought, well, he's a good... I want you to look at this, this other story here. RFK... Drops out of race, rejects modern uh, Democrat Party, and supports Trump. See, let me tell you something. The ones that want to remain established Republican and make a federal case of, of, of everything and won't support Trump because of that, you know better than Kamala Harris. I'm just hoping that American people are smart enough to say, hey, knock it off. And listen to me. Listen to me. I'm going to carry this as far as maybe the day after the election. And then I want to drop it for a while. You may say, but, but Jimmy, why? Politics is important. Yeah, but my show is called the James A. Hendricks School of Leadership. And what I see in this country, it's not just a political crisis, but a crisis of, of, of leadership. Okay. And I may start looking for other news stories to, to prove my point. And you might say, well, well, Jimmy, why? Why? Because, let me tell you something. When I was a teenager, I was a, de I was a proud Democrat. Because my... Um, my grandfather on my godfather's side said the Democratic Party is the party of John F. Kennedy, is the party of the people.
even though on my mother's side, they were a little bit more towards the Republican side. Uh, now, in 88, I voted for Dukakis. In 92, I voted for Clinton. 94, I went my way to Texas Tech. By the way, Reckham Tech. And I was, my eyes were open. Being able to tap into some, um, some um, BBS servers and everything, I began to read about what was going on. And the need for true conservatives in the Republican Party. And I honestly thought back then that there was a chance. That there was a chance. You may say, well, would you mean, why, why don't you support a federal ban on abortion? You know, normally I would. But the more and more I study politics, especially through the lens of me studying political science, I begin to see we're losing our grip, our grip on what America is, what America is really supposed to be. True conservatives shouldn't make everything into a federal issue. And why is that? Because that's the liberal playbook. That's the liberal playbook, and they win every time. They may not necessarily win every time in the ballot box, but you can darn sure know that they can win in the courts. Plenty of corruption going around. You may say, but, but Jimmy, why? Why is that? Well, let's look at it. Let's look at the issue here. Republicans are using the same old uh, playbook. Except for ones like me, true conservatives, that say seriously reason that could be we need to wake up GLP Dems are waiting a uh, crucial um, Teamsters uh, endorsement. Oh boy. Let's click on this news story. And you may say, hey, well, Jimmy, why? Listen to this. 